Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about negotiating your salary, your merit increases, counter offers, whatever it may be, but really negotiating as a employee with an employer. It's one of those items that's uncomfortable for a lot of people and some people assume that whatever the offer is, that's what it is and there's no flex room. Well, in reality, you know, studies have shown that there is room and you're leaving money on the table, benefits on the table, perks. And we're going to be talking about my 10 tips that I've used to negotiate myself into a better contract and items like that. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Just want to thank our sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. You can check them out at devmountain.com. If you're interested in iOS development, web development, Salesforce, quality assurance, UI, UX, Dev Mountain has a ton of great certification courses where you can go and not only uh, get sk some skills, but also uh, help you with their career workshops and they provide housing with their tuition so you can get up and go today. Not to mention the online and after hours one so that it fits with lots of people's different schedules check them out at devmountain.com so tip one is to always negotiate as crazy as it sounds most people aren't going to get an offer that they necessarily like or love the very first offer and that's okay according to the career builder survey done in just 2017 51 percent of employers actually are expecting you to negotiate are willing to negotiate and 53 percent said that they actually offer lower salaries because they're expecting a counter offer to their initial offer so be willing to negotiate be willing to to go back and forth because you're going to be leaving money on the table even if it's just something like five thousand dollars more of salary five thousand dollars is a you know each time you negotiate a higher salary or more benefits it's a a stepping stone to your next career it's five thousand more dollars you don't have to negotiate next year and you know these things have a snowball effect so please start negotiating so tip two i can give you is don't negotiate just to negotiate negotiate for what you care about right um a lot of times people especially as you get you know more more educated people who you know they've done debate classes they've uh, written essays whose the point of it is to sway one person or another and they they want to win um, get that mentality out of your head what you are there to do in your negotiations is get what you care about and not just get something extra you don't, right? If it's not important to you to have flex time, don't argue for flex time, because there's only so much wiggle room in a negotiation process on both sides. So try to negotiate the things that you care about and not focus on the things you don't just for the sake of getting something extra. Number three, negotiate in person. Now, this isn't always possible because depending on it's a, if it's a counter offer, depending on if it is a new offer, um, if at all possible, it's always better to negotiate in person. It is much harder to say no to somebody in person than it is over email or a phone. And that goes both ways. So you need to be mentally prepared for that. But when you negotiate in person, you can get a better read on the items you're suggesting, what is a possibility, what's not, um, how they're taking the negotiation process, you know, the whole deal. You, you, you'll be able to pick up on a lot more aspects, social aspects that go into this. So negotiate in person whenever possible. Number four, be prepared. Um, do some research, right? Every time I go into negotiation, I have my handy little uh, folder here with my, my notes and inside here I'll have a paper that has the items I want to negotiate, right? Um, I, you know, I recently did a negotiation and, you know, it, it made me a extra lump sum of money that, you know, I spent about four hours preparing. I, I said, okay, here are the numbers. Here's what my, you know, maybe my counter offer is or my, you know, this and that. And here's what the market rate is. Here's Here's the stats on the benefits and where we're not lined up or whatever it may be. And uh, here are some creative ideas on how we can get there, right? Because, you know, maybe there's not room for salary, but maybe there's room for benefits, right? And I'll, I'll show you a little quick snippet of something that I made up uh, in the past. So I like to go into contract negotiation with some notes of things that I want to get out of here, things that I'm willing to go to. because. 
a negotiation is you're going to give a little, you're going to get a little. And so some things are on the table, some things aren't. Now, I spent about, th here's a few items of items that I said, okay, I want to get one of these items out of my contract negotiations. You know, maybe I want to get a merit increase with the cashing out my, my PTO. Uh, in this case, one year was like three three months away. Or at the end of my second year of employment, I want a $5,000 cash bonus. Maybe I want severance, yearly education stipend, things that are important to me, update, upping my benefits, but items that sort of are different in different directions at all times because some things are on the table. Severance may be something that they're like, dude, get out of here, right? Uh, increasing PTO to 20, you know, 20 days from 15 might be something else. So I don't have this paper to give to another, uh, you know, whoever I'm talking with, whether it be the manager, the recruiter, but I do have some notes here on things that I want to get across or I want to get out of my negotiations. Tip number five, be reasonable. Let me say that one more time. Be reasonable. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can negotiate and some are just not on the table, right? Some are like, well, that's the company culture and we can't change the company culture for one person. We understand if we gave it to you, like, like, hey, I just want you to rework your entire 401k. You think you can do that? Because I I don't like your 401k. Can you do, redo it for me? Well, we have 5,000 other employees, Dylan. We can't just redo it for you. We'd have to redo it for everybody, right? So be reasonable what you're, you're asking for because oftentimes it can come off as offensive, right? If you're just like, look, this shit sucks and we need to change it and they can't change it, then they know that you're going to be unhappy with, with that. So be reasonable about what you ask for. Ask for things that are within the realm of possibility is what I'm trying to say. Tip number six, don't get emotional. Um, this is this is something that people look at this the wrong way. You are not going to battle in negotiations. It is not us versus them. What you need to look at it as a buyer versus seller relationship. When you buy something or you're being sold something, it is not a no one's being attacked. It is someone you're trying to come to a mutual understanding and there's no emotion involved. So make sure that you understand that because it's it's going to speak to your professionalism to a very uh, high degree if you're getting emotional, which leads to ultimatums. Do not give ultimatums in salary negotiations. We're here to sit down, talk, discuss like adults what we can do to make this arrangement happen, how you could how I can sell myself in a, not a physical way, but as an employee, and you can buy me at a rate that makes sense for the company to provide the value that you think I can. So you need to take a very sort of logical, non-emotional, definitely no ultimatums in there approach when you're having these negotiations. Probably the best negotiation advice I can give you for number seven is have other opportunities. It's hard to negotiate when you have no leverage. You know, when you there's only one option on the table then you're kind of stuck right where, where are you gonna go have other opportunities have you know be like all right well you know this is this is where I'm at because I have this other offer that is in this range and I want to stay here or you know I'd love to accept the offer but I have I have an offer for ten thousand dollars more can you match that I really did enjoy the company and the devs that I met or whatever sort of organization it is but when you have other opportunities, it puts you in a position of power that you don't have when you're not, right? Because you're not, they're not the only game in house from an employee perspective. They are one of the games and one that you want to work with, but they're not the only game and thus they don't have a monopoly over you for potential future opportunities. So if you can, and I highly encourage you to, have additional opportunities to put yourself in a, a negotiating position of power rather than one of, well, I don't really have a choice, so I guess I'll take what they offer me, which is what a lot of people do. Number eight is be willing to make a deal, right? Don't be, I already talked about being unreasonable about sort of certain items off, off topic, but a lot of times in a negotiation, you know, you're compromising. You are coming to a, a point where, hey, I want something, you want something different, where can we meet in the middle? Now that doesn't mean I'm telling you that to take $20,000 less meeting in the middle. That means that if you like the company and you wanna work with the people, be willing to take a 
you know, twenty five hundred dollar hit, or say, you know what, I'm okay that the PTO is a little bit less. That, but you said we could do this. Be willing to be flexible in your negotiations, and don't be super rigid. Now, if those things are super important to you, again, I I, I say okay then fight for those things. Fight for the things that are important to you. But if there's other ways that you can meet to find a common ground, be flexible, be willing to negotiate because that's what you're there for. And just just be willing to make a deal at the end of the day. Number nine, be willing to walk away. This is something that's hard for a lot of people. It almost goes back to poker where you have to sort of feign strength and feign weakness when needed. And if the, the company picks up on the fact that you're desperate, that you're thirsty if this is dating right you're going to be in for a hard run because they may like to negotiate this is something that they you know if you're dealing with a recruiter uh, H, someone from hr this is what they do this is th this is quite literally their job to to not only get employees but get them as cheap and save the company as much money as possible while still bringing in high talent you need to understand that if you at any point seem like you're going to take whatever they offer Guess what? You're going to take whatever they offer and they, they aren't going to worry about you not accepting the offer. And that's sort of the mentality you want to have them in from a good standpoint. Like this guy's very talented. This girl's very talented. We need to offer him something good because I can easily see how another company would pick him up for more. But if you are in that thing where, oh my God, I please, 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 I hope I didn't mess up in my negotiations and they take the offer off the table, which by the way, on, on a side note, doesn't happen unless you've really just, you know, gave an ultimatum, you were very rude during the negotiations, disrespectful, and it's going to happen because you've displayed character tricks that they don't want at their organization, not because you were intelligent and negotiated your offer. Number 10 is always end on a positive note. You know, negotiations are, are stressful. They're awkward at times. They are, they're important. And so we have to, we have to handle that, that situation. And, you know, I, I typically will always say, you know, thank you for the time. I know these aren't the funnest things to do or the most exciting things to do, but, um, you know, they are important and I, I do appreciate it. And I'm, I'm glad we were able to come to an understanding or unfortunately, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that we couldn't come to an understanding maybe in the future. Uh, we can work together, but thank you for the time. You know, end it like a professional either way, but end on a positive note. Thank them. Uh, tell them about how you're excited about the opportunity. If you get the, if you negotiate to a place you're happy with, really always end on a positive note I, because it, it, it speaks to you more than anything else. Whether you got what you wanted, um, but hopefully you negotiate and you're happy. But if for whatever reason you couldn't get there, understand that the fact that they are negotiating means they wanted to get there. They wanted to, but the the right of the world is you always can't right so just end on a positive note and be professional about it so those are my 10 tips for negotiating your your salary negotiating your contract your you know your counter offers your merit increases whatever these are things that i do that i've learned um you know i've learned the hard way of not good negotiation and i've learned the the good way the positives of negotiating so keep that in mind and i hope you start doing this in your career because the reality of the situation is half more than half of all companies are offering you less money because they expect you to negotiate if you don't negotiate you're making less money than they wanted than they would have considered to give you um and you know you can learn a lot you can learn a lot in the process about that so if you like this video uh, look forward to our next video which is going to tell you 20 things you can negotiate for other than salary right because we can't always get there on the money but what else can we get there on to make it worth uh make everyone happy so that we can get to that point so as always guys thank you so much for watching the video don't forget to comment like subscribe share hit that notification bell that's the thing uh, i'll see you guys next time bye Quick thank to our sponsor, deviceplus.com. If you guys are interested in Arduino and the Internet of Things, such as Raspberry Pis, might I recommend checking them out, deviceplus.com. If you click the link in the top corner, it will take you to a really cool thing. It's an intro beginner level tutorial of how to build a tripwire using Arduino. Check it out.